So continuing, one great thing about a break is it gives you a chance to get a fresh look at things and see if you want to make any changes. So as I look at this, I think that the picture needs to be a little bit taller and a few other things. I'm, I'm pretty close. I like it well enough, but I do want to make the picture just a little taller. So I'll do that now. And the painting, uh, by the way, is still wet. Whether I paint wet on wet or let it dry and, and continue just depends on what I'm trying to do and whether what's easier. Also notice that this ought to come in a little more. I also notice I want to bring this down a little bit so the bottom of this is just a little flatter.
I'm not all that concerned with the exact shape of these knitting needles. <coughs> I'm going to use a little smaller brush. I'm picking up more of that yellow ochre and white. Put a little bit of raw umber in that to tone it down some. Just reinforce these a little bit. This is the sort of thing that can be easier when it's after it dries. but I'll do what I can in this stage. <clears throat> I'm going to add some cobalt blue to raw umber just to get a little darker shadow color. And I'm going to mix it right into the on the canvas even though the shadow is a greenish dark green color since I've already got green on there. I can darken this without using any green. I'm not trying to cover up all of the paint that's already on there and blend it all that much. I want some texture and some life of that wall to have some depth to it, even though it's a flat wall. This painting will be a little looser than some of my paintings because it's kind of a loose subject. It's I just want to give the impression, the feel of what the palace makes us feel when we see it. It's not the point isn't to make a portrait of knit, knitting needles or even this nice picture here. It's to feel the colors and the light. I took the photograph, I wasn't even aware that these were knitting needles. I don't knit. I didn't care because I just liked the way it felt to me. more yellow ochre on my light color here and that's reflection, reflected light.
of just lose that edge a little bit into the wall. Just lighten up some of these areas, give it a little more interest. It's not too flat. Even though this is a fairly sharp shadow, I think it's more interesting if I blur it a little bit. Photographs tend to flatten things out a bit, it's more exaggerating the form. I'm going to pick up a little light green with a little bit of yellow in it. Where shadows and light colors meet, it's just an old painting trick to intensify the color in that area. And if you look at the photograph closely, I'm not sure you can tell, but there is some color there. I'm going to switch to the bricks a little bit. Just
I've mixed some raw umber and cobalt blue and white to make a kind of a grayish green color. About the color of that mortar where it's uh, light. So I want to make sure to get that one right here where it goes. And other things can be relative to it. That's probably a little too green. I'm going to use a little black to gray that out. <clears throat> now that I've decided the color a little bit, let me get the drawing part right. Object of the painting, and and they do naturally. But I'm gonna cheat a little bit as they go. <clears throat> and I don't want a lot of detail on this. I'm not trying to replicate exactly what I see here. So I pre-mixed, you'll see on the color video, some of the different brick colors. I'm going to start off with this lighter one. And this is raw umber and burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow. So where the brick is kind of light is where I'm using this color. I'm going to lighten it some back here. And let's see, where's the shadow? I'm using some ROM, but it connects right in here. And then just... I'll darken that brick color with some raw umber.
There's some mortar up against the wall there, and I don't like it that much, so I'm just going to leave that off. So I used the mortar when I did that as a rough guide, but as I'm painting the bricks, you can I can see that I need to make the bricks a little more uniform, parallel to one another. Darken up some of that mortar color in here. So the mortar has some dimension to it. I want to get those shadows in there. There are a lot of little imperfections and holes and chips. and That's kind of interesting, so I want to get some of that in there. flat light as well. So the 
this color is the same as the beginning brick color, but with a little more white and a little more yellow. It's a cadmium yellow medium. down this by putting a little bit of blue-gray on top of it. All right, I think that's a pretty good start. Don't have to do a whole lot more to it. could let this dry and add some more detail and fuss with it some, but I think I'm going to just keep going a little bit here while it's wet and declare victory. <clears throat> Next time I look at it, I'll probably want to make some small changes while it's, when it's dry, but we'll see. Switch to a smaller brush. Pick up a little of that light brick color for right in here, because this reflected light is coming from the brick, so it is going to be kind of reddish, as you can see.
going to make that handle a little thinner, a little more elegant. And get that reflective color there. Maybe a little lighter. want it to jump out, so I'm going to add some white right there. Colors start to sink in just a bit, and that's why it can be easier to just wait until it dries to reinforce some of these, which is probably what I'll do. I'll fix that. That one just messed up. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and in the next session after the painting is dried, I'll continue with just a little bit of kind of scumbling dry color over what I have and reinforcing a little bit of the shadows and some of the middle needles, things that are just easier to do once the painting is dry. So I haven't put the paint on very thick. There are a few areas like the whites here that are a little thicker than others. And I always want to be careful if I'm going to continue in a painting that I haven't gotten things so thick that I don't want to paint over it. So I'll just be aware of that as I continue not to paint over some of the little bit thicker highlights and areas of brighter color. And I'll let it dry a couple of days. So we'll see you next time.